Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you guys for joining us on this channel today. Today I'll be looking at FL Studio 20, in particular for Mac, and I'll be talking about using custom score files and creating groove pools. Um, this particular topic came up when someone was asking about creating hip hop beats or underground old school style East Coast beats with an FL Studio and how to put a proper groove in it. Very similar to some of my older Jay Dilla tutorials. But I'm gonna show you two ways to create your own score files that are really fast and efficient, especially for these st style of beats. So let me show you the example that I have first. Now in this particular track, um, the groove is decent, but with FL Studio or any step sequencer, your drums are usually more stiff than usual. And that's because you're doing it against the grid, whereas sometimes your samples, depending on the tempo or time stretching, will have this pocket and the drums aren't lining up with that pocket. So a lot of times people try to correct that using nudge, manually nudging or drawing audio clips for their drums. And sometimes you can use some of the humanized presets within the FL quantize context menu. But I find it better just to create your own quantizes altogether. So the first thing you would wanna do is think about your reference in terms of what kind of pocket or groove this style of beat would be in, especially depending on your chops, right? So right away, I hear the J Dilla Knife Wonder School of Production. So what I do is I open up Edison on my master track I go ahead and load my reference instrumental. If possible, get an instrumental only. And then if you get an instrumental, see if you can find a place in it where the drums are open, where there's not a lot of sounds or bass or instruments in the way, where it's the kick, snare, hi-hat. So I'll let you hear that. So that's a knife wonder joint. I'm gonna right click on this and go to edit. Once you get it looped up, I'm gonna do trim. Now from trim, there's a couple things you can do with this. I'm going to show you the native way that you would work with this. Let's do two things. First, I'm going to save the sample as. I'm going to save it to my desktop as reference. And then I'm going to go to one of my channels here. I'm going to insert FL Slice X. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this on in. So once it's in Slice X, there's a few things you can do. You can adjust the actual slices. So if you notice from this one, it's mainly catching the kick and the snare. And those steady eye hats aren't picking up because the sample's in the way. And that's one of the things I was talking about. But if you want to try it out and get it even smoother, you could try like sharp auto slicing to see if it catches some of the transients in between. Me personally, I'm going to go for that. And also on top of that, you could right click this icon next to it, which normally sends this particular MIDI pattern to the piano roll and updates it. I want you guys to choose flatten groove. And this way it's a straight ahead type of groove template and everything has its own pocket. You don't have to worry about the score or changing the pitch of any samples or anything like that. So this is straightforward. Then in your file menu, you can go to save score as and we'll call it knife type. Now I want you to pay attention to this particular file because it has the slices and stuff and it also has the straight ahead velocity. So to kind of demonstrate this, what I'm gonna do is take my drums and clone them and I'll just rename these to slice X version. So I'm gonna draw my slice X version in. I'm gonna double click on that to get into my piano roll. I'm gonna cut that particular data out. I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna go into my piano roll for my kick. And then what you wanna do is highlight all, so command A, and then we're gonna quantize it using alt Q. And then from this template box, you're gonna hit open. I'm gonna go to my desktop and choose that ninth type score file. And you'll notice these red lines are from our markers. You can adjust the start time. I say about 50%. There's this good starting point. Sensitivity tells it how many notes to grab. I keep that around 12 o'clock. And I can increase this some if I want these kicks to move on the money. As you can see, some of this is probably hi-hats or things in between. But just kind of find a happy medium for it. It's gonna be on context, like what does it sound like? And you can actually play this while you're adjusting it. So I'm gonna hit accept on that. I'm gonna do the same thing with my snare. And then I'm not gonna adjust anything else yet. I wanna see what these hi-hats sound like currently in pattern mode. So that snare got moved back or nudged back a little bit. What I like to do is go into piano roll. I'm gonna highlight it and then you can hold alt and then shift with your cursor key to the right. Just move it over just a little bit. It's a little bit too early for me. But it did catch the fact that Ninth Wonder snare is a little bit earlier than usual or they're pulling. Um, with these extra kicks right here, they're decent, but I might move them back just a little bit. Hold alt, that'll help you nudge with no grid. So that's all right. And now the true test, which is your metronome, is gonna be the hi-hat. So same thing here, Alt Q to quantize, hit play, and see if we can catch it. So 
So everything sounds good until it gets to around here. So everything's straightforward. I'll put this in context with the sample. So it's a little bit more groovier. I like it. However, it's missing something in the nuance that you're gonna get from most hip hop tracks in particular. Trap, this may not be this serious, but with hip hop, a lot of the humanization comes from velocity and not too many programs capture that. But one in particular that I do have does. And of course, if you guys been following me in Studio One and you have Studio One, you would have this and that's the Melodyne editor. So this is why I saved that sample out of Edison to my desktop so I can call it up here. So we're gonna go ahead and load that sample. And with this particular one, you just wanna make sure your algorithm is chosen to be percussive. In my case, it's the default. I'll let it redetect. And you can see all the different chops, almost perfect. And in fact, you can adjust these to kind of hear them. So those are the hi-hats. So it's not a 16th, it's an eighth type of chop that is doing, but it's on point. So with that, we can go to file, we can go to export, and we're gonna export this as a MIDI file. Save that to my desktop. Now on my desktop, it created these two files, the .mid and the .tempo.mid. I'm gonna duplicate my original again using clone, and I'm gonna name this one Melodyne. So in the Melodyne track, we'll clear that what was in our reference. And I'm just gonna use any pattern or block to import to MIDI. So I'm gonna go to the top left to file, import a MIDI file. We're gonna import our MIDI that was created for Melodyne. That's gonna create those different slices. And in particular, which is very interesting, is that now it's also captured the velocity data, which is very useful, makes it more realistic. So I'm gonna file, and what I'm gonna do is save the score as, and we're gonna name this one Melodyne. And that's pretty much it. It's an extra step by opening and exporting and saving and importing and saving it. So we're gonna go to kick, select all, alt Q. We're gonna use our Melodyne score file this time. Now this one's a little bit trickier now because it's not as many hits. So what we gotta do is back up the starting time, increase the sensitivity, and the ones that are not close enough to this line, we're just gonna ignore or just push it just a little bit, not too much. Because if it tries to get too heavy towards one line, it's gonna throw your whole thing off. But what I'm paying attention to is how it's cutting the velocity. And you can adjust how much it cuts it by adjusting this velocity wheel. So I might just take a little bit of that velocity for the kick track. Now my snare track, this one should be more one-to-one. -one. All right, so that's on the line. It's moving my snare too far ahead. Let's see what happens though, around here. And then the one I'm really interested in is the hi-hats, of course. Now it's moving them. I wanna catch that one, of course. I wanna catch that one, but it's moving too many. So I might have to decrease my sensitivity and just let it catch the ones that are close to a line. Decrease my sensitivity some more. So yeah, it's only catching the ones in your red line now with a lower sensitivity. Hit okay. Let's go in pattern mode, see what this sounds like. So that one's a little bit more groovier. Cool. So I have a totally different pattern than him, but I think with the sample playing, and of course with my side chain going, it's gonna sound fine. Now I'm gonna play it from the top real quick. So it's way more in pocket and more in groove. In fact, let's put that original back in and you kind of flirt with it and see which one you like best. Yeah, man, that's it. It's pretty much the two ways that I know how to do it. Of course, using SliceX is the freeway if you're an FL Studio user. Um, and if it doesn't include any velocity data, but it does correct the timing for you, which is probably the most important thing when dealing with kicks and snares. And then of course using Melodyne, which helps you adjust the velocity as well. That's more noticeable in the hi-hats when trying to keep, uh, trying to create humanization. And of course, if you can get live drummer performances or solos on drums or drum breaks, it's even way more profound when you use it to create different scores within FL Studio. But if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely leave them in the box below. If you're on social media, be sure to follow us. I'm at MG the Future on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to follow at Machine Masters. Until next time, guys, peace.